Well, technology in the city. Can city government actually be a catalyst for technological advancement? I know that technology, innovation, catalyst, these words probably don't typically come to mind when you think of government, let alone a city government. But I'm here to tell you that the city can have an enormous impact on your life with one thing in particular we're going to talk about here today, and that is broadband, fiber optics. TEDx is about ideas worth sharing, and I, this is my idea, and this is my belief, that if municipalities or cities get involved in the owning of infrastructure that is our digital highway, we will actually have more of an impact on your life and on industry than anything government has done since I think the 1950s. The 1950s with the Interstate Highway Act and over 41,000 miles of physical roadways that were developed and the billions and billions of dollars that were put in largely changed our lives and created and spawned just an incredible amount of industry. So we want to talk about, first of all, before we get into that, make sure, there we go, um, the role of government. So we have some people that question whether or not government should be involved in certain things. I think that's an ongoing debate. That's a fair debate. What is it that government should be involved with? And in this constitutional republic that we have, we believe, and our founding documents actually say that we have inalienable rights. We have rights to life, liberty. The pursuit of happiness really has been largely defined as being able to acquire and control property. That's how one is able to pursue that happiness. So one of the fundamental services of government is to ensure that that life, liberty, and property are protected. And we see that in military and law enforcement, uh, emergency responders, those individuals that are tasked or given up a portion of all of our individual, uh, a small piece of all of our individual inalienable rights, uh, cede to them to advance or protect those, those very fundamental things. Now, essential services are, is something that usually a city government will provide. And here's our mission statement for Riverton City. And our governing body is accurately captured that we want to be able to provide essential services. Well, one person's definition of essential may differ from somebody else's. Um, so essential services are my, you know, we, we can give examples here. We've got garbage, sanitation, you've got water, sewage, uh, roadways. But I think inherently these essential services all share a certain, uh, a few characteristics. Number one, they are essential. We need them. How long can we live without water? Uh, the connectivity of our roadway networks, that enables us to connect, to be able to go to work and do the things that, uh, that we rely on. I think they're also very cost prohibitive. A large reason why cities incorporated be able to provide these essential services because if left to the private sector, it would be very difficult, very cost prohibitive to go ahead and, and create them. And I think they also, a characteristic of essential services is that they're largely monopolistic or oligopolistic in nature, meaning there's not a whole lot of room for multiple entrants to be able to provide the road or the sewer, etc. Uh, I think another characteristic is that often you have to cross over property lines, right? If you think about roadways as they're built, uh, Farmer Luke just referenced this Bangor Highway, eminent domain, those sorts of things that come into play and that is why largely it reverts to the role of a government to be able to provide these things. So let's look at the digital highway, broadband. Can broadband be looked at and viewed as an essential service? Today in the 21st century with everything we rely on is broadband deemed an essential service? I knocked several doors uh, in the two campaigns I've been privileged to run in and heard overwhelmingly from people that they very much so rely on broadband. 
uh, for several things. So does it meet the test? Number one, is it essential? You look at these statistics, right? Broadband usage today. Just look at the amount of people that are using and accessing the internet just last year. It's almost 100%. I mean, the U.S. population is shortly north of, of 300 million. We have almost 274 million. By 2020, um, or excuse me, by, uh, since 2000, we've gone from 9.4 hours to over 21 hours of people being online. You spend more time online than you do on the roads. You know, the average person spends 170 minutes online per day. You think about that, 170 minutes. That's, over th that's almost three hours worth of your time. So I think broadband does meet that first, uh, that first test. It, it, it's become essential. 70% of people here uh, rely on high-speed internet connectivity to be able to work from home, right? So if you look at the industry too, it's largely monopolistic. There are just a couple of dominant players, really. It's very cost prohibitive, and it requires easements and access across multiple properties to be able to lay fiber optics across a city, across a community. I want to give you an analogy today, and it's if the government treats roads, the physical highways, like they did the digital highways, what would happen? Well, we would end up requiring FedEx and UPS to not only deliver the services that they provide and run over our airways and our, our roadways, but we would also require them to build separately and maintain separately their own roads. Can you imagine that? How duplicate, uh, duplicitous would that be to have FedEx, UPS maintain and run their own roadway networks? What we ended up doing instead was that the government stepped in and has largely provided roads and then opened it up, has open access for multiple service providers and deliveries to be able to run and ride over that. Um, so the lay of the land today right now in infrastructure and uh, services that relate to broadband, like I said, there's, there's not a whole lot of competition because there's just a very few amount of players that are in it. Um, what does that do? What does that translate in? Well, typically higher prices. Uh, we've not seen the cost reductions in that industry as we've seen in a lot of others that rely on innovate. And we see um, speeds that in legacy or what they call brownfield neighborhoods within our community, they're still working off of copper and DSL. If they get three megabit speeds up and down, they're lucky. We have some of those neighborhoods. And we see less innovation. There's less of a reason to innovate. So what could a city own, owning the infrastructure and allowing it to, the digital highway and allowing it to be open for competition, what could that look like? Well, the city opens, it owns the infrastructure and then by that is able to um, open that up and allow the service offerings that go over broadband or fiber to be, uh, be competitive in nature. The city right now of Riverton is looking at a project wherein we are wanting to connect our city buildings and perhaps all of our other city assets. So in addition to our city hall and public works buildings, we have pump houses and stations. We also have parks um, that we're looking at right now having high, uh, fiber optic broadband tied into state lines that are throughout our city already and interconnecting and then offering that high-speed availability, not just to our, uh, to, to our employees and the functions we need to operate, but then to residents to be able to use high-speed internet, let's say in the park, et cetera. Then we are taking it one step further and going to analyze the actual cost to run fiber to the premise or fiber to the home of every single home and business here in the city. And what would that do? Uh, what would the return on investment, what would the value offering be for all the residents? It's really hard to calculate. You look at all the applications that are coming down the pipe, and in addition, we largely think of just internet, internet service when we think of broadband, but there are several other applications. There is education, private channels that can be offered so that people and students can work from home and be connected to their instructor and their teachers. We have public safety applications. Um, through cameras and emergency alert systems, uh, working from home. We have telemedicine with a flagship hospital institution that we have here is very interested in being able to offer that through 
a, uh, again, being one of the services that would ride over, over broadband. And then transportation. Uh, our UDOT is very interested. You've probably seen recently where they've got autonomous vehicles that they're starting to go ahead and experiment with. And UDOT has fiber at every single signal and road, and underneath every road that they, they actually maintain and operate. So the applications for smart cities, the Internet of Things, all these things that you hear are going to be here in the very near future. Every industry expert I speak to basically says within the next five years, this is all coming, and the industries that, that we now know is going to be really turned up on its head. And it's going to be driven largely by governments getting into this space and providing the infrastructure, uh, being that catalyst for technological advancement and change so that we can have an enormous amount of services that come in um, and are provided that drives up competition and it drives down, uh, drives down price. And we've seen that in several cities where this is applied, where you've had $75 to $80 a month for basic internet service that's been driven all the way down to $9 and now $5 uh, just to have an internet service provider. And it's, it's amazing what we're going to see if cities start to get involved in this like they've done throughout the country. In Chattanooga, Tennessee is a great example where they offer 10 gigabit connectivity. That's symmetrical. Upload, download speeds to all of their residents and their businesses. So just think about that. And I like this quote. We'll end with this. Every industry... And every organization will have to transform itself in the next few years. They say, what is coming at us is bigger than the original Internet. And you need to understand it, get on board with it, and figure out how to, uh, how to transform your business. So city government, as much as it hasn't been viewed maybe in the, in the past or any government as a catalyst for change and innovation and te uh, uh, technology, it is coming. And uh, that is the idea that I firmly believe that as cities get involved in this, then it will have a substantial impact on all of our lives in the very, very near future. Thank you.